You were in for a treat today. My guest is Michelle. I, Michelle, I'm going to get it wrong. I know it's Yusabelli. Correct. Did I get it right? You got it right. Good job. <laughs> ah, well, thank you. Well, it was it was helpful to have you tell me before we went live so I could make sure I got that right. That's so, right. Michelle, welcome uh, to day number 209. Uh, this is taking place during Beginner's Day of Realism Live, which is pretty exciting. It's going well so far. Great. So, Great. Uh, Michelle, why don't you tell people what you're going to do today? Um, thanks, Eric. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And, and I, these have been a lifesaver watching your different artist guests throughout this whole pandemic. So I, we all really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, Thank you. Today, I thought I would uh, entertain people with my painting process. I, I always find it fascinating to watch how an artist begins and builds a painting. So uh, kind of a nod to my architectural side. I, I'll be working on a street scene and kind of showing you how I start from composition uh, through the different steps. Oh, good. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Architecture is my downfall. So it's hard. It's a, all... it's a challenge, right? Yeah. Well, we all need a little help with that. So, okay. So I, I'm going to bring you back in just a minute. I'm just going to make a couple quick announcements. And then all right. We'll I'll back. get set up. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. So our guest today is Michelle Usabelli, and uh, we're honored to have her today. It's going to be a lot of fun. My name is Eric Rhodes. I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur in Plain Air Magazine. And today is a red letter day because it's the day that Realism Live began. And Realism Live is, uh, today is Beginner's Day. So right now, as we speak, there are some instructors giving beginning lessons in still life, portrait, figure, uh, landscape, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Realism Live is a conference about all of those. So Beginner's Day is a separate day, and you still have time to actually get in there and sign up. And Beginner's Day, you can sign up for or without signing up for the whole thing. Uh, and if you get in there uh, before the end of today, you'll also get all the replays. And so you'll, you'll catch what you missed this morning. But uh, this is a worldwide conference. We have people watching and teaching from all over the world. Uh, it goes on for the next four days. It's called Realism Live. And it is a fabulous event. It's just you're going to have so much fun. And uh, we have a money back guarantee. So if you watch uh, one day, if you, you pay for it and you watch the first day and you don't think the first day was worth the entire price you paid, uh, we will refund your money for you if you ask, if you just let us know by the end of that first day. All right. So uh, anyway, Realism Live is going on. We've got some stellar, stellar people that uh, you want to make sure that you see, including Connor Walton from Ireland, Josh LaRock, Kathy Odom, William Schneider, Victoria Herrera, Tony Sirenai, uh, Stephen or Stephen Bowman. I always get that one wrong. I'm sorry, Stephen. Uh, Todd Casey, uh, Rose Franson, Mark D'Alessio, great, great landscape painter. Juliet Aristides teaching drawing. Kathy Anderson teaching floral painting. Jesus Villarreal, uh, Jeff Legg, Aaron Meads, Gabriella Deloso, Eric Koppel, uh, the great Dean Mitchell, the great Daniel Graves from the Florence Academy in, in Italy, uh, Daniel Sprick. Daniel Gerhardt's, uh, Victoria, or excuse me, Cornelia Hernes, uh, the great odd nerdrum. I mean, this is this was almost impossible to get. Uh, Jennifer Balkin, uh, Alia El Bermani, uh, Gabriela Deloso, John Stern, uh, fairly newly added was Dan Thompson, Patricia Watwood, and Greg Mortensen. So you don't want to miss this. You still have time. It's Realism Live. If you get in anytime uh, before the whole four days is over, you get access to the replays. And you can you can purchase the, the length of time you want replays up to a year. And uh, some of the packages have some goodies and things like that with it, too. But uh, we're having a lot of fun. And uh, I've, I've slipped over here so I can, can uh, give you a, a sample of uh, some of our daily things today with Michelle uh, a couple other things I want to talk about. First off, um, we have some winners of some prizes. And today is um, 
and day two, 209 is a winner of my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art, is Margaret Moses Croft of Charleston, West Virginia. Thumbs up and applause for, for Margaret. You're going to like that book. I, at least I hope you do. Uh, it's a great book for really learning the basics of uh, how to sell your art. Uh, today's prize is a digital subscription to Plenty Air Magazine, number one selling art magazine in America at Barnes & Noble nationally. It's now at uh, Michael's stores as well. And so we hope that uh, you'll consider getting a subscription at plenairmagazine.com. Uh, a couple of reminders. The uh, Plen Air Salon art competition uh, ends on 1231, uh, excuse me, 1031. And uh, you want to get your paintings entered. And so make sure you do that. All right. Uh, at the end of this week, uh, we're going to be, you'll watch for a live notice. We're going to be doing our Artist and Selfie Awards live on, uh, I think it's Saturday night. And so make sure that you, you tune in for that. All right. So uh, a couple other things I just wanted to mention to you is that um, first off, um, oh, what, what I lost my train of thought. Uh, every Sunday morning, I'm doing a blog called Sunday Coffee. It's kind of philosophy on life. And you can subscribe for free at coffeewitheric.com. And so that's a, a good thing to do. I, I, I think it's a good thing to do. But of course, I would think that, wouldn't I? Um, and then uh, I'm also taking a group of artists to Russia next September. You want to learn more about that by going to paintrussia.com. And we have our annual plein air convention, which is due to take place in May. There's a 100% money back guarantee in case it doesn't or you can't because of whatever happens to be going on in the world at the moment. And so uh, check it out at plenairconvention.com. But the thing uh, I want you to think about today is Realism Live because it's on my mind. We're, we're over there doing it and uh, want you to join us. So I'd like to get back to Michelle. Uh, Michelle looks like she's set up her easel. And um, what have you done here, Michelle? Hi, back. Hi, everyone. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing a street scene today. I went ahead and did my typical block in. I wanted to get a jump on it for everyone. But um, I typically work on a Raymar panel, and I always tone my canvas with a, an acrylic i use a golden fine acrylic because i you'll see as i paint I, I do a lot of scraping in i use a lot of different scraper tools and i really like the warm glow that i get from having that toned and that warm color um so first thing i did was how do you determine what undertone you're going to give it do you give it the same for all of them Yep, I use the same. I find that with this very uh, kind of more metallic, lighter, fine gold color, it it works under a really bright beach scene. It, it really complements well a snow scene. I, I just find that um, that is just a universal, just a, a color that I use primarily all the time when I'm when I'm toning my my boards before I start painting. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not something you see from a distance, but if you get up close to any of my paintings, you'll see areas. I use it a lot for highlights. You'll you'll see a lot of that kind of that warm gold uh, coming through. So it's All something right. I maybe start you could adjust your camera just a touch so that we're seeing a little less easel in the top of the painting. I don't know if that's possible or not. Let's see. Oh, there's a whole oh. lot more. We. Oh my gosh! Sorry about that. No, okay. that's okay. It's it's I couldn't tell. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit crooked, but I think it'll work. Okay, let me try. All right. I'm I'm such a stickler for detail. All right, you got it. Well, there it goes. It's I know it's tough. Whenever there's angles involved, it makes it a little difficult too. Okay. Is that gonna work okay? That's gonna work, yeah. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Thank right. you for doing that. You bet. Um and, and so, you know, kind of my approach to painting, uh, to a composition is I probably think about what I'm going to do. I work through the issues in my mind two or three, four days before I actually start painting. Um, that way I've, I've worked through my, my, I always set goals for the painting is, is it going to be a warm versus cool temperature shift focus? Um, I'll always kind of work out my issues beforehand. So the actual paint 
on canvas probably is about 30% of my pack overall painting process. So um, I wanted to get this drawn in beforehand just because it's 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 a little bit more of a complicated subject uh looking at perspective and vanishing points and so this is this is probably step two uh, after the initial drawing uh composition putting it on my canvas they'll go through and i'll lay in all my darks in a really light wash making sure that i've every single dark that is on this canvas is connected so that that creates a base and a good backbone for the composition in itself. Will you, will you talk about that just a little bit more? Because that's something that's not talked about enough. Uh, the laying in the darks and this, and the, yeah, the, the, the idea of the connection of darks. Yes. I feel like, you know, so much it, it's like, you know, if you do a still life and, and if, if you don't have the dark, colors underneath everything tends to float and so i really emphasize my darks and and by connecting them i'm creating a pattern where i'm drawing the viewer's eye through the painting in a fluid matter versus having it broken up and having um so so if you started to just take us one more time take us on the path take your brush and take us on the path so i can see how you yep. connected. So, and this isn't how I'm, I'm going to lead the viewer through, but this is the pattern of connecting my dark. So darkest darks I've laid in and, and kind of the pattern goes here. You can connect up, you can connect here, come through, you'll connect around her into here through him. And then every, there's every single dark is relates to the dark next to it. So that is just like if you like the backbone of a human anatomy. I mean, it's just it that becomes the the baseline of my painting and everything will work from that. And it's done very, very thin wash. I, I use Gamsol uh, to create my thin washes. And that's the only medium that I, I use um, when I'm and, painting. So and do you ever find yourself in a situation where you don't connect your darks? For instance, if there was if there was something floating, let's say a shadow. Um I would wouldn't... still, you know, even like right in here, I would still uh make add some color notes so that these darks are connected. I would like right in here we see a little bit around her. I would come back in and make sure that they're connected because I subconsciously, the viewer's eye, uh, I'm leading them through the painting that way. So right. Um, so they don't have to be all the same dark darkness. I just noticed one one line you did was uh, just a simple kind of a small brush stroke with not a lot of not a lot of deep value on it. Okay, right, so just, I've, just, I'll, I'll hush now so that you can continue on. <laughs> no worries. I. Uh, so I, I, I build my paintings a, probably a little differently than I've seen a lot of people do. I, I when I paint, it's a, I have a constant dialogue with myself, uh, paint, putting color down, light versus dark, uh, saturated versus unsaturated. So I start, once I've laid in my darks, I know that there will be nothing else on my canvas as dark as what I've already put down. So I'm always comparing the darks compared uh, to what I've already laid in. And then I start with my focal point and I, and I work out. So I'm going to actually start with these two figures, which is my focal area on this painting. So I find that when I start with my full, I work focal and then everything else supports the focal point. So can um, I ask you a question? Absolutely. I know I, uh, the, the reason I wanted to ask is we were having a dialogue the other day with Shelby Keefe, who does a lot of architecture. And the dialogue was about, you know, you've created a, 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 a perspective, you know, you've got a, a, a point, but where do the heads uh, of people walking, for instance, the people walking, do they typically, uh, are they at typically the, the, um, the focal point of the painting in terms of the, uh, the perspective? The peak of uh, the perspective. 
you know, it depends on just, you know, obviously if, if this road was curving up, people, the heads would be um, higher. But typically how I teach my students is if there was a group of people now, this, this is a figure I've just lightly uh, put in. He's over here. He's higher than the headline because he's way back. But if there were a group of people and as they move back, you kind of think of it as people, the top, the crown of the heads pretty much are all at the same level, but the size of the bodies will get smaller as you move back. So if there was a person, if there was a group beyond these that I would still have their heads right here, but their feet would probably be right here. So it's kind okay, of a, so, a rule. Of so thumb. the kind of the rule of thumb is the heads in about the same place. Now, obviously if yeah. you've got a taller person next to a shorter person, you can, you can cheat that a little bit. Absolutely. But it, it's, you know, this is a good rule to remember when you're out doing plain air and people are moving and, and, you know, that's one of the things that um, I think is, is the hardest when you're doing plain air and you're doing figurative figures out in the field because they're, everyone's moving so much. So if you can have some of those basic perspective concepts down, a lot of it is you putting in to your painting what you know versus what you're seeing sometimes. You need to, to go go back to your base of knowledge on, on what, what, what it should be technically to make it correct. I use, uh, I use a lot of these little shaper tools. Um, they're little sponge heads that I can come back. Now in. your hand is kind of blocking your action. So it's hard to tell what you're there. That's better. Okay. All right. So then you can wipe out some of the paint. Yep. You wipe out a lot of times you end up figures grow, subjects grow. But if you, if you start with your focal and then you come back in and, reshape them you really don't get too concerned about the figure yeah the now your hand is your hand keeps going right in front of the camera so we we are having trouble seeing those brush strokes when you make them so maybe right, let me you move can, maybe you just figure out a, a, a way yeah i Better? know it's tough no i yeah no that's So just really quickly laying in the form here of these two figures. Can you see it better this way? Yeah, much better. Thank you. Okay, great. So are you and using a photo reference or what are you using? Yep, I'm actually, this is a, a photo I took from Italy, it's I'm supposed to be in Italy teaching right now, so it's kind of a nod to. How's that trip. working out for you? <laughs> I'm visiting <laughs> here in my studio. I'm we're we're in Vivania today. And you're north of Seattle, if I remember correctly. Yes, a little a town called Woodway. Oh, I, and I want to show you, I'm going to lift my palette up here. Um, can you see my palette? Yeah. Ooh, pretty. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's probably seven colors that I cannot mix. All the rest are, um, I just have them out just for ease and speed. But I want you to pay attention to this puddle because at the end of the painting, I work off of the same puddle the whole time. It's a master puddle because every every color i put down on my piece uh has a color harmony because i am always pulling colors off of the same master puddle so in other words you're going to mix some of those master puddle colors into all colors yep so at the end if i do my job right i'll show you the puddle and it will be one just one mass master puddle there which I use to mix everything with. So once I get these figures laid in, 
I'm, I will start. You know, well, I was just thinking that one of the temptations is, you know, to, to always make sure it looks like you, there's two legs there. And in both cases, I, it kind of looks like one leg and maybe a touch of something else showing. Yeah. I, it's, you know, the, I, for me as an impressionist, it's, the challenge is what to leave out versus what to put into my painting. There's a lot of time where I want the viewer to complete the story without me having to give them too much information. So, um, you know, the, the, I don't, I, I really, I want this area where their heads, especially her head where it's going to hit the light. That's where I want your eye to go. So I don't want to have, too much detail uh, you you know as a viewer that they're walking down the street but you don't need to get every little uh detail in so you're not going to put every brick in i don't think so <laughs> okay. well you won't have time anyway <laughs> i won't have time left to my own devices and too much time we can ruin a lot of stuff yeah so true i, I when i'm in the studio i usually uh, put a timer on. I try to paint at the same case, cadence and pace as I would out in the field. Um, just so I keep that freshness. Are you painting thickly or thinly? It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, right. I'm going right in with some pretty thick paint because I my con my my approach is to put it down and leave it so i'm if i can take the time to mix the right color and put the stroke exactly where i want it i don't i won't have to go i don't like to go back on top and go back in so this is very this is getting pretty thick up here so lay it so down I'm, and leave it alone lay it down and leave it my students get so frustrated because I'll stand behind and watch them and I'll say, leave it, leave it, put it down, take time to think, plan your stroke, plan your color before you put it on your canvas and put it down and leave it. Don't, if you can help it, don't touch it again. Yeah. The tendency is to want to blend, isn't it? Yeah. And I will do some, you know, blending. There's a fine line between blending and losing edges. I'll, I'll use just a little, like a one inch brush from Home Depot to lose edges, I'll, I'll run it through to lose some edges, but um, I prefer soft edges to blending. Uh, having trouble telling, is that is that like a warmed up pink or a warmed it's up a, yeah, It's a more of a, uh, it's, if, it's a, called row it's pink it's pink it's phthalo phthalo red some white and some indian yellow so i'm just getting in the light where the light's hitting so this is this painting is also a story about light on this side warm light and cool shadow so this is a very divided painting light and shadow so i'm really going to pop out the warms Okay. in this light side and and all those create contrast in a painting they create energy the the warms and how the cools and the warms play against each other michelle you're such a good teacher oh i you know teaching has really helped me be, become a better painter i feel just because to have you have to really be able to understand and to um make sense of what you're actually doing and if it doesn't make sense does you know you'll people will call you on it <laughs> nobody calls me nobody calls me for any reason it's really sad yeah right so sure <laughs> <laughs> so well i believe that eric <laughs> no not at all so very quickly i'm just coming in you know this is not very thick I, the thickest paint was right here on the figures and and it while this while it's 
this highlight, this light that I'm doing is thicker than my dark wash. Um, it's not, it's not that thick right now, but I do believe in really loading up your brush. Now, is you know, that dark, is that dark uh, all dry or is it wet? No, it's it's dry. It, it's I did it a, about an hour ago, and it, because it is done in such a, a light, a gamsol, such a wash, it, it right. dries very quickly. Okay. No, if if that if it was at all tacky, then I would be uh, having I would be dragging dark into my light. Yeah. Yep. I'd be making mud. And uh, to me, clear, clean, does not out of the tube, bright color, but clear, clean color is, is super important. This is fun. Thank Any you. Any day I can watch somebody paint. The, the only day that's more fun is when, when I can be painting myself, but. Exactly. I think it's fun. I, I, it's for me as a painter. I love to watch how others, other painters approach their painting. We all have a different way of doing it. What's been fascinating to me is, is you know, I I encounter a lot of artists as you do, and and I thought I'd seen everything, and by doing this daily. I just keep learning new ideas and new techniques that, you know, everybody's got different approaches. It's really fun. Well, and as for me, even um, as a student of art, it's fun to, to learn and to watch other painters because, you know, there might be a little bit that you glean from one person that really resonates with you or might be something that somebody else says. And it's kind of, you can kind of adapt it to fit what, what you're looking for as a painter. I don't use a mall stick. I don't know if you could see, I, I use my pinky and I place it like a compass and I use that to support me as I'm doing yep. my straight lines. And then I'll I use this. something cool one time, speaking of mall sticks, I've never talked about this, but I was at a museum in Europe somewhere and there was a guy standing next, had a big studio easel and he was copying a Vermeer and he, okay. had, a, he had a hook at the top middle of his easel and his mall stick was on that hook. So rather than picking it up, it was just always hanging there and he'd just take just, it one angle or the other. Oh, so just I've dangling down. <laughs> it was really, really pretty cool. Did you try it? Have you tried that? Does it work? Well, I, yeah, I, I have it on my easel. Unfortunately, I loaned my mall stick to somebody shooting one of our videos and it disappeared. Uh oh. So I just bought another oh, one. Wow. I got it to it. Yeah, you know, artists, you need to watch them like a hawk. Yeah, they're all a bunch of thieves. You got to be careful. Watch your back. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I, I already, thought... people are going to say something in the comments. <laughs> uh, one thing I do use, and, and people make fun of me, other artists, they call it, it's my little kindergarten ruler. Oh, um, cool. But I use it. When I'm scoring lines, I, maybe it's the architect in me, but I think it's really important to have some straight lines. Not that I, I just use them as like back to my base and my backbone, but it's, it's, it's even on a landscape on the horizon. Um, if there's any little perspective element off or if the horizon isn't straight, those, those little things that aren't right the eye, the viewer's eye goes right to them. So were you an architect? I was. And it yeah, took me so a Joe McGurl told me uh, I had made kind of a slight angled line towards the horizon, <laughs> like where that person is. And uh, he said, even though you, you oftentimes feel like you see an angle, he said, it'll work better if it's just straight. He said, otherwise it'll confuse your viewer. Yep. And, and it happens. And, and um, you know, when we're painting and when we see, we have the reference photo or we're out on site and we see what we're, we're doing, um, it's very easy to be misinterpreted by the viewer who hasn't, doesn't have that ability to look at the reference photo. So yeah, it's anything like, you know, I truly believe if a painting 
if there's some element off in the drawing, you can have the most beautiful paint application, but the viewer will, the eye will always go to what's off. So, um, you know, I believe, you know, spend time to get your um, drawing done right. And especially on a perspective, get the angles in there correctly and the painting will work. Yeah. When you were an architect, what did you do? I did a lot of pretty boring reflected ceiling plans and hospital designs. So cool. was not nearly as creative as I had hoped, but, um, but it, you know, it, it got me, I did a lot of drawing classes, a lot of technical drawing. We had a lot of great, I did a wood shop class, a lot of photography. So everything I've done really supported the whole idea, the whole painting process. Well, it's surprisingly, uh, the good architecture schools uh, had abandoned drawing and they had, they were doing drawing, but they were, they had gone to, to electronic drawing and they realized yeah. that they were doing a disservice to their students because if you're sitting with a client and you need to draw something out, you, you, you can't always pull out your iPad. You, sometimes you're drawing on the back of an envelope or something. And right. so now they've reinstituted uh, critical drawing skills in the architecture schools, which is great to hear. It, it is because when I was graduating, it was when AutoCAD was just gaining, just coming into play and, and, the kind of the thought was, oh, we don't need to know how to draw now. We'll just put it on the computer. And that's exactly right. That craft was lost. All right. So the, I've got. I'm going to go into my cool side now. I've got my this warm side in. So perspective too, there's a building back in the middle here. It's in the shade, in the shadows, but the values are going to need to step way back to show depth. And I move, I change my brush around based on the direction of my stroke. I hold it differently. I hold it, I, I paint from my shoulder, not my wrist. Well, that's why you've got such interesting brush strokes in there. Yeah, and, and varied brush strokes, I think that's one element that makes it interesting to the viewer too, if your brush strokes are interesting. And changing up your brush so you're not using the same brush for every part of the painting. I want to get rid of I don't, this blue here. If you can see it, it's too it's too bright on the edge. You guys enjoying this? Put your uh, comments in. Yeah, any questions? All right, so you've made that a little darker because you want it to come forward. Yep, it's still in shadow, but I want it to come forward. I want this. Your hand is hi hiding it again. Okay, there you go. Hard habit to break. I'm sorry, yeah. No, that's all right. Don't let it happen again or I'm gonna have to cut you off. <laughs> I'll be silenced. <laughs> I am a I am a brutal, brutal sled driver. No, I can't use that word anymore. Oh, taskmaster. That's it. How's that? Well, I don't know. We're not even allowed to use the word master anymore. Oh gosh, I better. Be so uh, we won't even go there. I'm sorry. I should have not brought that up. Um, it's looking <laughs> good. Looking good. <laughs> So now you're laying in for some 
some palette knife. I'm just come. Yes, I want to come in and just kind of simplify some of this. So you normally uh, teach workshops in Italy and other places? All around the country, yes. But this year has been an exception, right? Yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah. Well, things will end up somewhere. Things will, it'll start to, it'll get better. Actually, I want to. You talk to yourself when you're painting in my head lots of voices in my head yeah lots you of conversations to see somebody about that <laughs> so my husband I, says uh because i do videos i i trained myself to talk the whole time i'm doing a painting and because some people don't talk when they paint you know when they're doing demos on video and so on and it's really crazy because I'll sit here and do a full full out demo when I'm painting and there's nobody in the room. I'm not on video, but I'm still, I'm explaining it out loud. It's just really nuts. That's funny. Well, you're just so used to it. And it's actually a, a talent, right? Because a lot of times you get painting and you forget to talk. Oh, I know. So I'm just still, I'm just building all around from this focal area. I want to. Blocking. There we go. Yeah. So is that sky? It's sky, it's sky, but it's more of a, tr some trees. I'm just trying to get, there's some trees in the background. I'm going to move up lighter and lighter as I move up into the sky. But I wanted it dark, so a little darker, so I could define the edge of this building. We got about 12 or 15 minutes yet. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. I can finish this and we'll post it later, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And and you were uh you were smart to paint small. Yeah. That's looking lovely. Well, you know, people I'm a pretty methodical painter, I, you know, and and people are usually surprised because it's not super zippy. Well, that works. Keeping that dark a little, that sky a little darker also really makes that light pop. That's, you know, that's, that's, this is kind of my focal area. I'm going to get the, start going a little bit into the foreground. There's a little bush right here. We got some green as a complement to the the red. Looks like you're darkening your darks a little bit as they're coming forward. Yeah, this one is a little, that was a little too dark of a stroke, but I can continue it up into this, make it a little more consistent. This is nerve wracking under pressure. Oh, yes, it is, but it's good for you. <laughs> it is. Well, you volunteered for this mission. I know. I, 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 my dad used to say I would. I take the course of most resistance all the time. Yeah, I wish my kids would do that. 
，他笑最后。You know, one of the areas I always struggle with is、um, ground plane surfaces like roads, things like that, on a sunny day. Right. Know, because, because instinctively, you know, in your head, well, it's gray. But how do you how do you bring light to it and make it make it feel like it's light hitting on that gray surface? Right. I always, you know, because this, I I just tend to push the warms and cools, and、uh, this is. Some white with Naples yellow.、Uh, it just supports the warm in the building. I, I mean, and you, as you move close out to the edges, I will gray it down, and I it'll I'll gray it down as I move back here. But if you want it to pop and to really read as sunlight, it's nice to air on the side of. Warming it up. This is really coming together, isn't it? It's really lovely. Oh, thank you. We'll see. And then as I move down away from my focal point, though, I'm going to gray it, gray down this the saturation of this purple. If you can see, it's a very subtle shift. And do you just gray down with complementary colors? Yeah, I, there's a color I love. It's called Buff Titanium. It's Buff and- Titanium. Yep, it buff titanium. Certain brands, it's called unbleached white. Yeah,、um, I use that a lot. I, I I use it more than I use white. I I love I love the color. It's not as chalky as white can be. Yeah,、um, so, so that, that allows you to gray gray things down a little bit. It does. Or、uh, I use golden ochre, and golden ochre does the same. So it's, it's a great graying agent. Learn something new every day. Yeah, trying. So let's just. Michelle, you make it look so easy. Oh, thank you. This is、um, sometimes if you're getting stuck, it's easy just to scrape it down, and and you know you can start overthinking too much.、Um, that's why it's always nice to have a plan before you start. I have plain air. I I do a lot of plain air painting, and it, but it's always a challenge for me because, like I said. When we started, I, I will start a painting in my head, prior to,、um, actually putting paint on canvas. And so, plain air, you got to get out and just kind of jump right in, and that's my most challenging thing to do. So, if those buildings were kind of a terracotta,、um, would you make that terracotta in the shadow kind of blue? Over here. Yeah. Over here.、Um, well, I will. What I'm doing is so I typically I would keep I would keep this whole area 
if even the terracotta, I, I put a cool tint to it. And then, um, then I would, I would keep the shadows blue over on this side in the light. I would actually keep it kind of a local color. And as you can see, like the, the shadows into here, I've left warm. So yeah, yeah let, uh -huh. me, let me put a, a darker, like here's a window, right? A little kind of blue green. Right. So just kind of giving you some sense of the cool side of the street and the warm side. So you got about six or seven minutes. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. Let's but finish. if it's not done, we're gonna get we're gonna have to have a talk. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. No pressure. I'm actually coming in with some uh, cools right in here uh, to play against the warms, just so your eye. I'm starting to lead you up through through the painting with some color notes. I kind of sometimes I feel like it's Hansel and Gretel leaving breadcrumbs. It's how I can bring how I I determine how the viewer comes views and goes through the painting. Well, so far you're getting an A plus. All right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate how that you've been doing this for, for so many days because it has a lot of people I've talked to have just really, really look forward to it. Well, thank you. It's been fun doing it. Are you going to keep it going or what's your plan? Oh, I don't know. I uh, I can't get anything else done. <laughs> I, know, I can't I imagine so, that you're a painter. So I added a full-time job by putting this together. I added a, another full-time job to my already full-time job. Yeah, it's like we're, something's got to give at some point. Yeah. So is that a brush or a big shaper? It's a big, it's a big shaper. Oh, cool. A big, a big right. rubber. All right. Okay, I'm going to give you six minutes and then you're out of here. All righty. I'll finish it after we're done. Yeah, well, this has really got a lot of energy. It's really fun. So I'm curious about the light that I'm seeing on the right. That's all going to go into shadow. Right here. Oh, yeah. this, yes. Yeah, let me, I can, let me just do a quick color note here so you can. All this will be shadow. Very block, very roughly blocked in. And I, you know, I will come back. I, I do need to lighten the sky 
up in here so I can, I'll actually take off some of the paint so I can come back in without making it muddy. Well, when that's I, nice. Yeah. It's a little confusing when people watch me paint when I start with this gold tone because everything looks warm. Yeah, it's but it's little... nice to have those little spots that show through and and um, also it really reads well in the street. Yes, and so you can kind of see down here in the street. Um, the, my plan. Your grand plan. The grand, always have a plan. Don't leave anything up to chance. There are happy mis little mistakes happen, which are kind of those fun little things that you don't expect, but always have a plan. And don't be afraid to scrape it. If you get the drawing before you start painting, you've drawn it and you don't like the composition, scratch it down and start again because Paintings are lost right at the start. I one of the great one of the great lessons was the very first plein air convention. Scott Christensen was on stage. He did this marvelous demo, and then at the end of the demo, he smushed it all, and everybody <laughs> was gasping. Like, but what did you <laughs> like? Don't fall in love with your work. Just exactly, and and that's the hard thing when you do a a pretty you know, a real complex, large composition is you spend so much time drawing it in and composing it correctly, but you have to be able to let it go too. You can't, don't get so married to it that you can't start through, start again or scratch it down if it needs to. I'll, I'll have my students do that a lot before they start painting. After they compose it, I'll have them show me, and if it's not composed right, we'll scrap, we'll scrape it off and start again. Yeah, it's a very important lesson for people. Yeah, you have to be able to lose that control, and don't be too married to it, so you don't. All right, you're coming up on. I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for paying, tuning in and watching. So I should, uh, while, while we're talking, I should pull up your website so people know where to find you. It's Michelle Usabelli. Mm -hmm. dot com. Dot com. Or it's Usabelli. Is it pronounced Usabelli? I say Usabelli. My husband says Usabelli. So. All right. Well, who's right? You are, of course. Of course, of course. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Even though he grew up with that name. Even though it's his name. Yeah. He actually says Usabelli. Yeah. Like a fine Italian. Yes. All right. Okay, so why don't you come on camera real quickly? Uh, maybe you can... Um, Yes. Good. 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 Uh, that was fabulous. Applause Thank and you. thumbs up to Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. That was really, Thanks really wonderful. Ah, uh, you're welcome. It, it needs some more work, but I will work on it, and uh, we'll figure out. We'll get it posted so people can see the final. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you. This I learned a lot today. This is this all right. Is I appreciate you doing this. Thanks everyone for watching, and keep on painting. Yay! All right. Our guest was Ms. Michelle Usabelli. Usabelli. <laughs> uh, a reminder that today, I, I think I completely forgot to mention, uh, today we have a fabulous uh, 3 p.m. video for you. And it is, what What did I, I, I know I forgot to mention it. Oh, man. I, oh, yes. Sherry Christensen, Brushwork and Backlight. And you can find it on YouTube or, or Facebook at uh, just search Streamline Art Video. A uh, reminder that you can still get into Realism Live. It's going on now. Beginner's Day is going on. You can still get in uh, up to the very last day because you can, of course, get access to the replays for up to a year. 
and there's a money back guarantee. So get in and, and you will love it. Some of the world's best masters, uh, just absolutely incredible. Realism Today presents Realism Live, the ultimate art learning event, October 21 through 24. Five days of online art lessons from leading artists. Learn to paint nature, people, flowers, and more. Become a better artist. Click the link to register now. That link, of course, is Realism Live. Well, I better get back to it. You guys have a terrific day. And remember, the goal of these daily broadcasts is to keep your head in the game, keep you positive, keep you focused on doing something you love, learning about art. I would appreciate shares if you like these daily programs. You see one you like, share it with your friends. I mean, we have people all over the world watching, and it's very nice to create this universal world community of people. But in order to do that, they need to know about it. And not everybody knows about it yet. Just just a, a few of you. So we need to get more of you, right? So uh, just go ahead and share it. That'd be very helpful. You can follow me. My name is Eric Rhodes. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Whatever you like to use, I'm there. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a really terrific day. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher and founder of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Remember, keep